Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome to the Econ Of. In a previous video, I discussed the iTunes gift card scam. And while I was making that video, I remembered that I had once heard iTunes gift cards actually sell for more than their face value on eBay. I went and looked it up, and sure enough, they still do. Why is that the price? Let's talk about the economics of gift cards on eBay. Actually, a gift certificate is worse than cash because you can only use it in one place. And it expires. I found an academic paper on gift cards sold on eBay. It's by Dr. Jennifer Pate, and it was published in 2007. In this paper, Dr. Pate says that a gift card's value should depend on its potential uses. She collected data on gift cards that have been sold on eBay. Consistent with her model, a gift card sold closer to its face value if the store had more locations, greater product variety, or had a better online presence. Gift cards like Home Depot, Starbucks, Walmart sold very close to their face value, while gift cards such as Tiffany & Company, Abercrombie & Fitch were far away. But the paper is 12 years old, and a lot has changed in retail over those 12 years. So I wanted to update her paper by collecting new data. First, I got many of the stores that she had collected data on and looked at their values today. The order of the gift cards stayed the same. Home Depot and Walmart were near the top of the list, while Abercrombie and & Fitch and American Express were way down at the bottom. One thing I noticed is that since 2007, gift cards are selling closer to their face value, even for the gift cards that were at the very bottom of the list. You have to pay closer to their face value today. And this makes sense. Online retail has changed significantly in the last 12 years, and so gift cards have more uses today than they did 12 years ago. But another thing I noticed, on the list of gift cards that Dr. Pate collected, none of them sold at a premium. They were all selling at a discount. This changed when I included newer gift cards. iTunes, Amazon, and Visa gift cards all sold at a premium. And the Visa cards sold at a pretty large premium, close to 20% more than their face value. What's going on here? One common theory is money laundering, where buyers or sellers launder stolen credit cards through eBay, using gift cards as something of tangible value. There are certainly cases of fraud or money laundering going on, like this $10 Amazon gift card that sold for over $1,000. But that's clearly not what's happening in most cases. So what's happening here? Have we broken economics? Are people irrationally spending more money on these gift cards than they need to because of some psychological behavioral quirk. Let's test two other theories. One is the PayPal theory. PayPal is an online payment system that is very popular online, but not all retailers accept PayPal. iTunes only accepts PayPal in certain countries. Amazon doesn't accept it at all. But eBay does, and the PayPal theory says that people are using eBay to convert PayPal dollars into dollars that they can use in retail locations that don't accept PayPal. Another theory is the limited access theory, that you can't get into some places unless you have a membership or you have some sort of account with this place. Gift cards allow you to circumvent that requirement because as long as you have a gift card, that kind of acts as your temporary membership card. To test this theory, I remember a life hack from my student days. Costco normally requires you to have an annual membership to shop at their store, but you can get around this requirement if you have a Costco gift card. So I looked up Costco gift cards on eBay, and sure enough, they're selling at a premium. So these explanations, the PayPal and the limited access theory, they're looking good. But how do we know that that's exactly what's going on here? Maybe there's something else. Maybe it's just that these products are in demand, and they actually sell for more than their face value because of high demand. How can we test that it's not just a demand-based explanation? The answer is Netflix. Netflix is available in over 190 countries and they accept PayPal. So neither of these theories should be putting Netflix cards at a premium. When we look at Netflix gift cards, they actually sell at a discount. Even though Netflix is a hot product, they don't have the same access issues and so they sell at a discount. So Dr. Pate's model is intact. The gift card's value is related to its potential uses. We just have to remember that potential uses no longer includes just store locations and product variety. We have to consider that there are people who need access to these services but can't get them because they have PayPal or because there are membership requirements. Although retail has changed significantly in the last 12 years, this model still holds up pretty well. 
Which explains this. In addition to severance and everything, I want to give you this gift certificate to Chili's for me. Okay? No hard feelings. Thanks for watching. Look in the description for a link to my blog where I discuss this issue more. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning more about economics. I'm Craig. Thanks for watching the Econ of.